Hello, I'm Rochelle, and this is episode 141 of the Genuine Realtor Show, which airs every Friday. Burlington is a great city for a lot of reasons, and it can be an amazing place to call home. But when choosing where to live, it's helpful to find out as much as you can about what living here would really be like. So with that said, today is all about the pros and cons of living in Burlington. Ready? Let's go. Let's kick off with our first pro. Burlington is in an amazing location. Nestled into the western shores of Lake Ontario, in the heart of southern Ontario, we are a short drive or train ride to Toronto, Canada's largest city and the capital of Ontario. An equal drive time to Niagara region, which is home to wineries, Niagara Falls, and all of the tourist attractions that come with it. A day trip or a weekend away, you're close to all of the fun Southern Ontario has to offer. Our first con is a biggie for most people and it's home affordability. Burlington can be expensive to buy in. Now, the cost is relative, so if you're comparing Burlington to Toronto, Mississauga, or Oakville, we feel pretty affordable. But it's a city where starter detached homes are over 700,000, so if your dream of living in Burlington doesn't align with your budget, there's a good chance you'll be starting at a lower rung of the property ladder and working your way up. You can check out my website for up-to-date benchmark prices in Burlington. I'll put the link in the description below. Now, as a local realtor here in Burlington, I deal with questions about home affordability all the time. So please leave yours in the comments below or feel free to send me an email. And if you're enjoying this video, please like it, subscribe and click the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Up next is another pro. Burlington is a part of the Halton region, which is considered by Statistics Canada as the safest large municipality in Canada. That's not to say that there's no crime, but the Crime Severity Index measures not only changes in volume, but also the relative seriousness of a crime in comparison with other crimes. It's important that you do your own due diligence on these matters, so I'll link some great resources in the description below. Up next in the con column is our traffic. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. Rush hour exists here, and there can be a 20 to 30 minute difference in commute time between our western and eastern neighborhoods. And anytime the main highway backs up, the interior streets begin to feel the pressure. With the QEW 403 and 407 merging right around Brand Street, it's a natural bottleneck and is something to be aware of. Another con is our public transit system. The city of Burlington is working hard to improve public transportation options, but it's still heavily vehicle dependent. If you're moving from a larger city and are used to conveniences like a bus every five minutes or the subway system, you'll be in for an adjustment. There are lots of locals who utilize the transit system, so it's certainly not impossible, but it is definitely something to consider. On the flip side, the pro of our transit system are the three GO stations here in Burlington. Appleby GO to the east, Burlington GO in the relative center, and Aldershot GO to the far west end. We also have 11 highway access points for the 403, Queen Elizabeth Way, 407 and Highway 6. Paired with our geographic location, Burlington is a commuting hub. Another pro is our property tax rates. Now we aren't the lowest in Halton region, but we are considered relatively low province-wide. And substantially lower than our neighboring Hamilton-Wentworth region to the west, to the tune of about $2,000 lower per year per $500,000 in purchase price as of when this episode airs. Again, please do check out that link in the description below if you are considering a move here so you can do some research. The next con are the two quarries inside Burlington's limits. We've got one in Tyndaga and one in rural Burlington. Now, these aren't a con to everyone, but there are some offset effects being weighed out in the proposed expansions of both quarries. Residents are upset about traffic, noise, and potential effects on property values, while others focus on the fragile ecological systems. There are long-term revitalization plans and a small portion of homes could potentially be impacted. 
This is one of those issues you'll want to look into if you're planning to buy a home in their vicinity. Our next pro are the amazing park spaces here in Burlington. Now, if you've watched any of my neighborhood video tours or the video with five reasons you'll love living in Burlington, you'll know that Burlington is an amazing place to live and play in an urban setting with access to nature. We are talking over 200 kilometers of trails, 127 parks in the city, the Royal Botanical Gardens, which is the largest in Canada on the west end, and Bronte Creek Provincial Park on the eastern edge. The protected Greenbelt region, as well as the Niagara Escarpment, which is a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve, home to over 50 endangered species and one of the most biologically rich places in Canada. There's a lot of nature packed into the city and a lot of people are working hard to protect these spaces. Back on the con side, downtown Burlington is experiencing some substantial pushback in regards to development. There are a lot of people upset as the face of downtown transitions from a classic suburb with a handful of mid-rise buildings into a more urban feeling with an influx of tall high-rises. The city has been striving to strike a balance between modernization and protecting the character of this vibrant community. Another pro, there are more than 10 post-secondary institutions within an hour's drive. That means if you're looking for employment, studies, or a demographic to hire from, Burlington offers a lot of opportunities. In fact, 73% of Burlington's residents have a post-secondary education, which is 8% higher than the provincial average. On the con side, Burlington is home to more than 200 kilometers of biking infrastructure from paved utility paths, to the designated biking lanes. But if you ask anyone who rides to commute, to exercise, or to simply get around, most will tell you that it's not as safe as it could be. While the city is trying to incorporate more safety standards and encourage cycling, the fact remains that this city was substantially built out in the 60s with a heavy reliance on vehicles. So while there are dreams of truly safe bike lanes, there's still a long way to go. Now those utility paths are such a cool feature here in Burlington and I did cover the one that is in the south end. It goes from the Burlington Oakville border all the way downtown Burlington to the beach and beyond into Hamilton. So do check it out if you're curious. If you're looking for a great school system, you're in luck because Burlington has 42 elementary schools, five of which offering the full-time French programs, and we have nine secondary schools, five of which also offering that full-time French immersion program. Now, if you're looking to do a deep dive into the school system, the Fraser Institute is one of the most consulted resources when it comes to evaluating school performances here in Ontario. Its data is based on province-wide tests and the Fraser Institute compiles the data into a handy searchable database. Just remember, test results aren't the full picture, so recent first-hand accounts are important to consider as well. Another great thing about Burlington is the beach and all of the waterfront parks in the city. Being on the shores of Lake Ontario has some true advantages like our marina and Burlingtonians know how to make the most of the lakeside lifestyle. I will also add the beach is on a sandbar so the water slowly and gradually gets deeper making it a great place for young kids to splash around and explore. Now on the flip side to that, Lake Ontario is home to all of the inlets of the streams, creeks and rivers nearby. So they travel through our fertile green belt, through the city and into the lake. Now with that, it brings all of the runoff and has created some algae blooms. So you'll definitely want to check the water quality before you swim. Luckily, the city updates the water quality often, making it easy to check before you head out. Another con at the beach is the occasional smell from the wastewater treatment facility. Sometimes you smell nothing, but if the breeze is offshore, you might want to wade a bit further out into those shallow waters to avoid any unpleasant aromas. Now, if you're looking for some amenities for the arts, Burlington has you covered. 
from the Burlington Arts Center to the Joseph Brandt Museum to the Burlington Performing Arts Center and smaller companies as well like the Drury Lane Theater. There's a lot to explore right here in the city and you're also less than an hour away from the GTA, GHA and Niagara amenities if you wanted to expand your options. Burlington is home to a wide variety of amenities from our amazing library system to the rec centers to the arenas and the swimming pools. There is something here for everyone. But if you are a sports fan, we do not have a professional team within our city limits. But that said, we are still just a short drive over to Hamilton to catch the Tiger Cats or a Bulldogs game and a short drive or train ride into Toronto to do the Blue Jays, the Maple Leafs, the Argos, or the TFC. If you're into NFL over CFL, you're a short hop over the border to the Buffalo Bills or the Sabres if you're looking for a more economical way to catch an NHL game, depending that is on what the dollar is doing. So while Burlington is in Canada and we clearly experience a full four seasons, we benefit from our location with something called the Lake Effect. It gives us slightly cooler but humid summers and less snow in the winter than other nearby areas. Now, the closer you are to the lake, the more it takes effect. So geographically speaking, south of the QEW experiences less snow than north of the QEW, give or take. That great weather paired with the city's amenities for seniors, it's no wonder so many people who downsize love to call Burlington home. If you were looking to keep your parents close, Burlington offers a wide variety of seniors buildings from assisted living to full care homes to senior focused rentals to an assortment of main floor living options. Now, if you're more interested in nightlife than geriatric care, I feel you, but you may be disappointed with Burlington scene. There are a few dance floors in the city where you can still bust out your moves, but clubs just don't seem to stick around. From Big Bucks to Zoo Bar, lots of places have made a good run over the years, but right now, there's nothing in the city that quite ticks that box. However, if you're someone who loves outdoor festivals, patio life, and entertainment, you'll love the revolving seasonal events downtown. From Canada's largest rib fest, to the children's festival, to Burlington's epic Sound of Music festival, to the Festival of Lights, Burlington offers an assortment of events to enjoy year round. Burlington also boasts two traditional malls with Burlington Centre and Mapleview Centre, as well as an assortment of strip malls throughout the city. So for many, the shopping is more than sufficient. But if shopping is your thing, you may find yourself working your way back towards Toronto for some of the stores you love but can't find locally. This one is more of an occasional mention versus a legitimate concern, but I've had clients who truly can't go without their pottery barn or whichever store brings them joy, so it's worth mentioning. And our last pro for today, all of the amazing neighborhoods here in Burlington. With 21 to choose from and no two the same, there's something to suit every style and you can tour through them all on my Burlington playlist or you can take a deep dive on my website. Thank you so much for watching and taking a tour with me. Until next week, keep it genuine.